Oh, I like her roots. I'm recording. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. I get went the root vegetables. Of I went to root to get the root vegetables because I had been there recently and I knew they had really what looked like farm fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. You know, things that were like not hardly even washed. <laughs> and uh, the carrots, in fact, actually had all their stalks on them, but they wilted and I cut up, I ended up cutting them off. So I, I set up some still lifes. Um, I started out in the sunlight, but it was too strong. You know, this time of the year, the sun at 11 o'clock in the morning was coming in and it was so strong. Yeah. I couldn't really work with the sunlight that well. So I moved everything on top of the dining room table. And basically, uh, if you look at, who has a copy here. of that photo? Okay, yeah, the actual photo here does not have the darkness at the top. But you can, so what was happening was that we have a big window in the back of the house and the light on the beats was essentially coming through that window straight at me. So it's like backlighting or what you call rim lighting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that can often produce a very nice effect of light and shadow because you can, you have a lot of shadow to work with. The only real light struck parts are on the top and around the edge of the rims of the leaves. There's a lot of rim lighting going on. And then this part is kind of in shadow. The carrots were actually in shadow. Most of the towel was in shadow except for some of the sunlit parts over here. And I decided uh, to put the black background in. Uh, Mimi Hegler had done a painting about a month ago, you know, with the mason jar and the red onions and shallots. And everybody loved it so yes. much. So I thought, well, let's try something. She doesn't mind. I said, let's try something similar, you know, where we do a, try to do a black background and some of these other paintings have a mason jar in them. So uh, I did that just to try it. I think it would have worked just as well if the background had been left white. This uh, painting? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I disagree. Because oh, see the photograph? Black, yeah. I think the black. You like the black. I like the black. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> I kind of, here's what I wish I had done. I wish I had painted the whole picture without painting the black background, photographed it, and then painted the black background oh. so oh. I could compare. I see. But look, compared to the photograph, look how blasé the background Well, that's true. Like, There's like nothing. <laughs> that one is dyed out. It pops it out. It does. But yeah. what it does also is it creates a nice division of space. So you have this really yeah. dark yeah. value, solid dark value up here, representing maybe 20% of the picture. And then you have this representing maybe 80% of the mm. picture. So you have a division of space according to the, uh, what do I like to call it, the 70-20-10 rule. <laughs> you know, essentially where um, in this case, I guess I would say 70% of the picture is a medium value, 20% is a very dark value, and 10% is a light value. So you've got a kind of a division of space. It's not too monotonous that way. Um, is, is this an established established rule? Or well, I mean, I've heard up? it elsewhere. I didn't make it up myself. Uh, some people call it the 80-20 rule. I prefer to break it into three parts, 70, 20, 10. And so if in a painting you have 70% is either a dark value, a medium value, or a light value, that's okay. It doesn't matter which one you choose. But 70% should be one of those values. 20% should be another of those values, and 10% the third. Okay. So if you have an overall light picture, then maybe 10% could be dark, you know. 20% medium and 10% light. So when you know? people do an 80-20 rule, mm -hmm. what, is, what, is, what are they talking about? Well, I about? think they're talking more about just the division of space. I mean, you could also talk about this in, in the 80-20 sense, like this is 20% and this is 80%. In that case, we're not really talking about values, we're just talking about the division of space. Okay. So if you have a seascape, for example, instead of putting the horizon halfway through the picture, so the horizon is, the sky is 50% and the sea is 50%. It usually works better if you either have the horizon way down low so that mm -hmm. the sky is 80%. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. Thank you. So. Uh, what colors did you put for the black? Well, I'm going to uh, tell all of my colors as I go along. Okay. And I'm going to try to write this up for the blog by Friday and tell all the colors that I used on Friday. 
You know, it occurred to me while I'm painting, I should write down in the margin of the paper the colors that I'm using, mm -hmm. just so I don't forget. That's what David Daniel says he does. Oh, okay. He says if he yeah he uses a new painting, a new right. color, he writes the new color in the corner of yeah, his painting, and then when he's when it's dry, he's finished. He says, huh. You can evaluate like that. Maybe I don't. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think it would, especially for me, because I need to write this up for the blog, to have a list of all the colors mm -hmm. I used would be handy. That's a great idea. And I could just lift up the tape and write it down. And, Somebody and, I know, you know, when she finishes a mm -hmm. painting, she writes on the back of it. Right. right. All that information. All the colors. Well, at, when you finish a painting on the back, you should sign your name, the title, the date that you painted it, where it was painted, and maybe even the colors. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's a good idea. Mask. Did you use a toothpick? No, I used a mask pen, you know, one of those little bottles with the nozzle tip on it. Mm -hmm. Don't shake them. Yeah, they get bubbly. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I only masked like the tiny blue mm -hmm. hairs. Right. That was the only you, part. I did mask string? this okay. one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that leaf, that beautiful green leaf, would look oh, so transparent gorgeous. if it wasn't black behind it. Right. If it right. wasn't dark behind yeah, it. Yeah, they it wouldn't would, look it as would, transparent. Yeah. Right, I agree. Yeah, these look. Mm -hmm. Nice and that's bright because, them. yeah, right. Okay, so anyway, that's how I did that one. And now the other one is, it's about a third done. I'm hoping to get a lot done on it today. Um, I want to sell my paint and move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this wow. one is going to be the one with the mason jar in it. Where's my photo? There was one on the table. Oh, here it is. Oh, here it is. Oh, here's the Yeah. <laughs> so for this one, I'm using a lot of the same colors. I'm kind of thinking these paintings might make a nice pair. Or a serious set. If somebody yeah. wants to buy. Anyway, um, so let's see. We have the uh, same mixture of colors in the background, uh, the same cloth towel. Notice how I painted all the shadows first before painting the stripes. I think that's always a good idea uh, on fabric or anything that has a pattern on top of it that you're going to have to paint to paint the shadows first. Because if you paint the stripes first, they Nine. might bleed mm -hmm. when you mm -hmm. add the shadows, mm -hmm. especially if you're using liftable paints the way I do. Um, and did you paint the dark first to set the values of the whole paint? Well, I last night I just wanted to show people what I was planning to do with the uh, background. And I mixed up that color so they Such could get... Such a gorgeous color. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a... It's a mixture of a green and a red. It's like eggplant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. It looks oh, aubergine. Wow. <laughs> aubergine, right. So anyway, let me continue working on this one now. What position put one beat in the glass? Well, actually, I just wanted to get it to stand up because the greens were very floppy. I don't know, they were getting a little wilted. It doesn't take very long. Yeah, and the carrot greens were wilted completely. I ended up cutting them off. Did you cook them? Not yet. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I only chose vegetables that I wanted to eat. Like, it would have been nice to have radishes, but I hate radishes. I know. People either love them or hate them. I hate them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they would have been a perfect shape. Like, they have a small vegetable in here. It would have been nice. Oh, bye, Louise. You got to go? Yeah. I'll be okay. somewhere today. Okay, okay. Did you choose the carrots for their color? Um, color between the red and the mm. orange? Or well, not really. Because uh, like uh, I knew I would eat them. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about turnips, actually. I like uh, turnips. Turnips would have been fun to paint, but I hate turnips. Yeah. What can you do? You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just did some turnips. Oh, and then they had uh, shallots at Roots, but guess what? They were $9 a pound. Oh, <laughs> they're, they're always expensive. <sighs> Yeah, but, you know, I you guess only need, need two or three. Yeah. The, 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 the other thing is that the new Safeway up here has a nice organic section where you can buy vegetables that have all of the greens on them. Mm -hmm. Some very strange, very strange vegetables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Your cheese. Right. Well, once you put beet in the glass jar with water, mm -hmm. did the leaves perk up? Yeah, they did actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I should have left it in there. I, I ended up cutting off the leaves and putting the beets in the refrigerator to paint, oh. to, to eat later, yeah. to cook. Yeah. 
eat or not. Gotta figure out how to cook meats because I've never really done it before. By the way, I was showing last night's class the effect of mixing colors to get a gray. And uh, this is just plain neutral tint here. And there's no granulation, you know, it's not very interesting. This is ultramarine blue plus a mixed in orange. So they're opposite colors, right? Blue and orange are complementary colors. When you mix them, you get gray. And so that's kind of the more interesting gray. And this is a mixture of cerulean blue and the same orange. And you can see that really granulated. That's what they call a luminous gray. You know, it has an interesting color yes. and texture. This actually is a mixture of, this is the mixture I was using of the red and the green. I was using permanent magenta and perylene green. And again, they're complementary colors, right? They're opposites. So when they mix together, they make a gray. But neither of those are granulating colors. They're both pure, transparent colors. So it ended up being a little bit uniform. But when you put it on, what you can do is take your puddle and sometimes make it a little more reddish, sometimes make it a little more greenish, mm -hmm. and then you'll get the gray to have a little more character. Um, and did you purposely leave out the diagonal line? Well, yeah, I may not put that in. Yeah, that was just a blanket, uh, mm -hmm. and I don't think I need to put that in. Uh, we'll see as time goes by. All right, so. So I guess, Ben, you're going to have to focus on the mirror. Are you getting everything in? Yep. I'm still recording. Oh, okay. I better be on my best behavior then. <laughs> <laughs> no swear words. <laughs> did you get the beads? Ben, did you get the uh, Yes. Oh, you're so old. Look at this. They're just growing. Yes. Oh, I think that's awesome. I love that one. I love it. Nancy, do you want to move? Oh, go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's so full of work. I have a, as long as she doesn't stand in front of it, I can block your view. Sorry. Right. No, I, I can stand. I'll try to sit okay. as much as possible. No, well, I can stand. Yeah. I'm, I'm moving over. Okay. Thank you. She works. All right. Thank you. And also, Nancy, to see better, try. did you try the binoculars? I will. Yeah, it's amazing. You have to adjust them for your eyes. And I'm not sure which way you hold them. You have, that's the way, I think. Yes, because it made you smaller. Yeah. That's why you pick up an elephant. Look at the one with the glasses until they're really small. All right, so the funnest part of this picture, is that a word for funnest? It's, it's, it's mostly used, but it's not real word. It's most funner. Funner. It's most funner, but what, what are you doing scrambled? Okay. No. I think it's the beats are the best part to paint. So you can just it's beautiful. Good friends. What? I think we're good friends would paint that. <laughs> exactly. Funner. Okay. I'm going to uh, just so wet my paint. I always forget to do this, and this thing always gets stuck. What do you I want to have more water. Oh, right. I have a, like, eight or nine. It makes me nervous. Oh, yeah. I need more pressure. You get faster. Yeah. You can't push it too far. Right. It's just stuff. Yeah. Otherwise, it works really well. That weird sound that they say. I know what you see. I put people from the West Coast, and I know what it's like. It's like they're called. They wear out or something. Sometimes it stops working. I don't understand. It just stops working. All right, so I was kind of sticking to trying to stick to a limited palette to some extent. Um, it's nice, but it's hard, hard to, to talk over it. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh, I see. We had wedding pictures on the camera. No wonder it was. Yep. Wow. <laughs> so, um, I'm trying to stick to a limited palette of my primarily three primary colors. Uh, quinacridone red, cobalt blue, and I'm using the bright Hansa yellow. Uh, you could probably use either of you know, my two yellows, a real and enhancer, are both bright. I wouldn't use like yellow ochre for this because it might dull it down too much. Um, and the beet stems are pretty much the same color as the beets, you know. So I'm trying to get a nice variety going in my purples and a lot of variety going in the greens. So to get the greens, I'm just mixing the yellow, well, I'm using either cobalt blue or sometimes cerulean blue to mix the yellow. The cerulean gives me a brighter, to, to mix the green. The cerulean gives me the bright greens. Mm -hmm. And then to get the carrots, I'm mixing the quinacridone red with the Hansa yellow and getting the orange. And then for the dark background, I told you that's different because none of those three colors are really dark enough <laughs> to get such a dark background. So for the dark background, I'm using permanent magenta and uh, perylene green. Um, okay, so let me start with the uh, second beat here. So I'm just going to mix up a puddle of my quinacridone red and add a little blue to it. Now this beat has kind of a highlight in the middle, but it's not like white. Uh, I think I'm for, to begin with, I'm going to sort of paint around it, and then I'm probably just going to add a spot of water and let the paint uh, bleed in, you know, uh, wet and wet for that. And also, I think that <clears throat> that beat is really in the shade, but that was partly an artifact of the photography, I think. It's, uh, I'm not going to make it quite that dark. Um, I've got the picture filling up the screen, but I believe I can zoom in further if you want me to. Yeah, why don't you do that? Parts. If you can zoom in occasionally on what I'm painting. Sure. Yeah, that would be the thing to do. Could be on TV, film at 11. Yeah. Maybe I'll put it on my website. That'd be cool. Or on the blog. I guess you can put this kind of thing on the blog, right, Ben? Um, uh, probably. At the very least, you can put it on YouTube or something. Right. Mm -hmm. This is different. Yeah, we've never done that before, so don't know much about it. Which one is she painting? Mm -hmm. That's different. Why? That shouldn't it be back then. Yeah, the mirror's back, yeah. The mirror's the mirror matches this. No, that's that quinacridone gold. That's confusing. Oh, that confused me too. Yeah, the, don't forget, it's reversed in the mirror, so, yeah. This is a 10. ten. Yep. It's pretty big, but it makes a beautiful point. So mm -hmm. I can do lots of you know little things with it while I'm going along here. So there I, I'm just gonna kind of leave that uh, space there and then I'm gonna add I wanna make it just a faint light blue color. I think I'll just add a little bit of verditer. It's too much, so I'm going to take my damp sponge and just dab that. I don't use a paper towel because otherwise I'll create a uh, dry edge mm -hmm. and the paint will start creeping back in and make a sawtooth edge. But if I blot it with a damp sponge like that, it's still wet, you know. <sighs> Okay, now I'm just going to keep coming down along this uh, root here, this tap root, I guess it would be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> My science teacher was always. I didn't teach much botany, actually. I always liked zoology. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite. Although I loved microorganisms, you know, which are in a class of their own. I think I really do need to switch to a smaller brush now to get out to the end of this thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't wet the paper. Cold press? Yep. Arches cold press, 140 pound, stretched. Yeah, there are some tiny root hairs, but I think I might paint those after I'm done painting all the stripes because, again, once they dry, they might bleed out. You know, so. Now, for the beach, I like the way the paint, I can see it's already beginning to form some nice backgrounds. Why not encourage that? I'm going to drop in some water and make it form some backgrounds. Um, the chart. Yeah, yeah. Not right. Oh, that one. Yeah, I did. Yeah. But I noticed there's something about quin red. It tends to do that anyway. It doesn't spread very well. It's kind of a thick taint. It has some weird properties. I'm expecting. Okay, so this is exactly, exactly. It's giving it its own unique texture. So now I'm going to mix up some of the green. Uh, and when you're mixing a green with a yellow and a blue, I would start with the yellow because sometimes just a tiny bit of blue is all you need to make that turn into green. But as I see it, the green is in this photograph. I mean, if you look at them, they're really dark at that point. The ones up high are, dark, are lighter. But these greens are really dark, so in fact, um, I might even use ultramarine blue because that's a lot darker. Is that different from French? No, it's the same. French, it's the same thing, I think. Actually, that's too muddy looking. I'm going to take that away. I don't like that mixture. <laughs> And instead, I think I'm going to use, uh, hmm. actually, I think I'm going to use perylene green and just maybe put a touch of red in it or something. Because it's nice and dark, right? Look at that. I love that color. Yeah, it's a beautiful <laughs> color. For, it's a very natural looking color. And if I add some like red or purple to it, it'll just make it look a little bit. I, sometimes I don't like to use colors that other artists can easily identify. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if you have a whole lot of burnt sienna in a picture, yep. and it just kind of screams burnt sienna, well, your average person is not going to know that, but your other artist is. So it's usually better to just change it a little bit, you know, add a little red or uh, whatever it takes. Go to shows and hear somebody say, oh, now that's cerulean, and that's... I know. <laughs> oh, right. Well, with watercolor, sometimes it's hard to disguise the effects of like cerulean blue especially you know it's such an obvious color but um so are you adding color on the paper or were you adding well i was i just picked up some of that red and started to okay. add it so i've got green at the top and it's kind of going down more toward red because i'm going to blend in these stems here So uh, I just want to let you know if you are ever applying for membership in the BWS, make sure that you have a good variety of greens in your pictures. Because that's because one thing they green? talk about all the time. <laughs> yeah. I, no, it's not. A, no, no, that's not any particular person. But a few members are kind of obsessed with that, and they look at that all the time. If a, if it's a landscape and it doesn't have a good variety of greens, they'll mention it. <laughs> so I'm tempted to say sometimes, well, I don't know, I think this needs a greater variety of purples. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> for some reason it's only greens that they care about with that. And it's kind of funny. Uh, I agree. It's, you know, but it depends on the intention of the artist. 
you know. Yeah, what they do with Sharon Green is a beautiful painting of the Della Pointer. Did you see it? Oh, yeah, I saw that. There was yeah. a green in there that I remember. Uh, there was well, it wasn't a green It wasn't a landscape. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a person sitting on a couch, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a lovely painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think we need to see too much detail on this particular leaf. It's, uh, you know, Near the in the background. And yeah. These white slivers, I might come in after that dries and do a little negative painting and get, I don't necessarily want those white parts mm -hmm. right there. Um, and you've got a blossom. Yeah. Where? Here? Mm -hmm. That's okay. I like that. I like to get blossoms. We're used to blossoms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you must have had a lot of blossoms. Oh, yeah. Out of control. <laughs> right, right. Right, right. Where was it? It was yeah. in Columbia. And what was the topic? It was Carol Carter's way of mm -hmm. painting. Mm. Do you know who she is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is. A lot of water. A lot of, a lot of water, big washes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. blossoms. Mm -hmm. She said something, but she watches them. She said she has to sit down oh, yeah. and watch them. we got to watch it. Oh. Make sure it dries the right way. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's true. Very true. Carter. 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 Yeah. That must be Jean. Jean. Yeah. Jean is going to join us. Yeah. She had to leave early the other day. Yeah. So, so, so um, back here in the back. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start working on the jar while that dries. One thing fun about still life is you can kind of put one object into the other as they dry. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't you're not usually painting the except painting the background any real big washes. So I see the top of the mason jar, it's for some reason, has a bit of a yellowish color. Mm -hmm. That must be coming from... Maybe the carrot. Could be partly reflected from the carrots, and it could be partly just picking up some of the shadow colors and the cloth. Um, I've got a little bit of just dirty paint here in my palette I think I can use for that. So when I, I'm, I'm going to have to simplify the reflections to some extent in here. And when I simplify, what I usually do is just, I paint what I see as being the areas that have the greatest value contrast. But if there's something really subtle going on, like there is right in here, I see one much lighter spot. I might do that one much lighter one, but I'm not going to worry about all the tiny ones. Mm -hmm. It's just they're not important enough to, to convey the idea that this is a jar, you know. Um, and I'm not going to worry about that little one. I'm not going to just leave it white because it's not white. If I left that white, then the areas that truly are white won't look white. You know, take away from those. So. And I'm going to just drop in a little blue because it's very orange. So I'm just going to, in order to get a little bit of complexity going on in here, but not actually copying the photo, I'm just going to drop in some other colors to make it look a little more interesting. And then we have some of the same color on this side. And again, there are some whites there, but not many. Why did you choose blue for any particular reason? Well, I, at first I painted it orange, uh, and I thought that was a little too orange. So I just wanted to kind of cancel out some of that orangey look okay. by using a little blue. Uh, So I'm just, I did, you know, I have a drawing in here that shows me where some of the main spots are located that are like highlights and stuff. So I can um, just paint around them. I, I didn't use any masking fluid because, I don't know, you don't really have to use masking fluid. If, if the shape is not too complicated, it's often better just to paint around it. Now I see a little on the, like the shoulder of the glass jar, I see a lot of purple. That's probably coming from the background. So I'm just going to drop in a little bit of purple there. It's so important, uh, you know, to show these background colors through here. Uh, but the main 
background color is going to appear down here. Um, so let me go down into that now. In fact, I've got that background. Oh, no, that's the green. Let me mix up more of the background color. It's the permanent magenta and the uh, terrelene violet. I mean green. <laughs> See, I can't say color names when I'm yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's very hard. Okay. Thank you. I'm just sitting in the announcer spot. I'll have to have you. Right. You're not able to come tonight. No. You, one of you guys is going to have to sit next to my palette and tell everybody what color <laughs> what color she's using now. We're just missing the yellow side. Are you going to blog post? Yeah, tonight. I am on Friday. I'm gonna, okay, great, and I, I need to go. remember to take photos here along the way. But right. right now, I'm just kind of painting one object at a time, and I don't think I have to take a photo just yet. Did you stick fairly close to your photo in your drawing? Yeah, I did. Well, I, I traced it, you know, so it is. Uh, you know, I felt the composition was good, so I just left it the way it was. Uh, to do what? To take good photographs for stuff. It is, you know. I took. I have to show you the ones I took. I took like seventy-five photographs. Oh my wow. God! Thank God for so digital cool. cameras, yeah. you know. Um, I took twenty for that one. Mm -hmm.